I will be discussing about the trauma of the chest and lungs. Rib fracture. According to Mancini 2014, rib fractures are the most common type of chest trauma with blunt injury. Broken ribs are most commonly caused by direct impacts such as those from motor vehicle accidents and falls. Most rib fractures are benign and are treated conservatively. Ribs 4 to 10 are most frequently involved. Fractures of the first three are rare but can result in a higher mortality rate because they are associated with laceration of the subclavian vein or artery. Fractures of the lower ribs are associated with injury to the spleen and liver, which may be lacerated by fragmented secretion of the ribs. Clinical manifestation. Pain in the chest wall, bruising or swelling around the ribs, shortness of breath, and difficult taking a deep breath. To reduce the pain, the patient splints the chest by breathing in a shallow manner. Diagnostic and laboratory procedures. Chest x-ray, rib films of a specific area, ECG, continuous pulse oximetry, and arterial blood gas analysis. Medical management, sedation to reduce pain and allows deep breathing and coughing. Alternative strategies to relieve pain includes the intercostal nerve block and ice over the fracture site. Chest binder may be used as a supportive treatment to pro provide stability to the chest wall. Discomfort can be relieved with epidural analgesia, patient-controlled analgesia, or non-operated analgesia. Surgical fixation is rare because most rib fractures heal within three to six weeks. Flail chest. It occurs when three or more adjacent ribs are fractured or two or more site, resulting in free floating rib segments. So na chest siya mga nahitabo tas na-detect na, na three or more adjacent ribs ang fracture. So there will be a paradoxical chest movement in breathing where sa inspiration, the flail segment will be pulled in with a decrease in pressure while the rest of the rib cage expands. On expiration, the flail segment will also be pushed out while the rest of the rib cage contracts, impairing the patient's ability to exhale. There will be the mediastinum, the mediastinum moves back and forth, and this paradoxical motion results in increased dead space, reduction in alveolar ventilation, and decreased compliance. If gas exchange is greatly compromised, respiratory acidosis develops as a result of carbon dioxide retention. Hypotension, decreased tissue perfusion, and metabolic acidosis often follow as the as the paradoxical motion of the mediastinum. Clinical manifestation, extreme pain in the chest, difficulty in breathing, bruising and swelling, and, and even rising and falling of your chest when breathing. Diagnostic and laboratory procedures, clinical examination for bruises, paradoxical movement of flail segment, chest x-ray, pulse oximetry, and arterial blood gas analysis. Medical management. To provide ventilatory support, to clear secretions from the lungs, and to control the pain. If only a small segment of the chest is involved, the objectives are to clear airway through positioning, coughing, deep breathing, and suctioning to aid the, the expansion of the lungs. To relieve pain by intercostal nerve blocks, high thoracic epidural blocks, or cautious use of IV opioids. Patients with a flail chest should undergo chest physiotherapy. Positive pressure ventilation is indicated in severe cases of flail chest. For mild to moderate flail chest injuries, the underlying pulmonary condition is treated by monitoring fluid intake and appropriate fluid replacement. For severe flail chest injuries, in the tracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation are required to provide internal pneumatic stabilization of the flail chest and to correct abnormalities in gas exchange. Internal fixation of the fractured ribs in a patient with a flail chest provides a definitive treatment. 
However, this is usually not needed. Prognosis. Mortality rate of late chest ranges from 10% to 25%. Ventilation has a little effect on outcome. Pulmonary contusion. It is defined as damage to the lung tissues resulting in hemorrhage and localized edema. It's frequently associated with failed chest and is associated with chest trauma when there is rapid compression and a compression to the chest wall. Pulmonary contusion. There's an injury in lung parenchyman capillary network. This results in leakage of serum protein and plasma into interstitial and alveoli and bronchioles. Tas na ay makuha ng pulmonary edema that can interfere gas exchange. Tas mo increase ang pulmonary vascular resistance tas ang pulmonary artery pressure occurs. And this will lead to hypoxemia and carbon dioxide retention. Clinical manifestation. The clinical manifestations vary from decreased breath sounds, tachypnea, tachycardia, chest pain, hypoxemia, and blood ding secretion to more severe tachypnea, tachycardia, crackles, frank bleeding, severe hypoxemia, and respiratory acidosis. Patients with moderate pulmonary condition have a large amount of mucus, serum, and frank blood in a tracheo tracheobronchial tree. Patients often have a constant cough but cannot clear the secretion. Patients with severe pulmonary condition have signs and symptoms that mirror ARDS, which may include central cyanosis, agitation, combativeness, productive gut, cough with froth frothy and bloody secretions. Diagnostic and laboratory procedures. Pulse oximetry, arterial blood gas, and bronchoscopy for moderate pulmonary condition. Medical management for mild pulmonary condition. Adequate hydration via IV fluids and oral intake is important to immobilize secretion. Pain is managed by intercostal nerve blocks or by opioids. Antimicrobial therapy. Supplemental oxygen is usually given by mass or cannula for 24 to 36 hours. Moderate pulmonary condition. Bronchoscopy. Intubation and mechanical ventilation with PEEP. A nasal gastric tube is inserted to relieve gastrointestinal distension. Severe pulmonary contusion may develop respiratory failure. Aggressive treatment with endotracheal intubation and ventilatory support. Antimicrobial medication may be prescribed for the treatment of pulmonary infection. Prognosis. Most cases resolve five to seven days after injury. Signs detectable by radiography are usually gone with 10 days after injury. Nursing diagnosis for chest trauma. Ineffective airway clearance, ineffective breathing pattern, impaired gas exchange, acute pain, risk for infection, activity tolerance, anxiety, and impaired tissue perfusion. Nursing intervention. Monitor respiratory rate, depth, and character. Monitor SPO2 and ABG. Auscultate the patient's lungs. Administer supplemental oxygen as needed. Administer analgesics, clearing secretions, and encourage deep breathing exercises. Providing comfort and emotional support. Intubation and mechanical ventilation may be required and maintaining surveillance for complication. That would be all. Thank you.